What's up, guys? Happy Friday morning. All packed up, ready to go. Gonna go hit the trails. I think we got uh, three other guys. I think there'll be four of us total. Truck's somewhat packed out. Still uh, trying to dial in how I pack everything out in the back, but got uh, got my handy dandy clothes bag. I actually made another bag last night for my uh, sleeping bag. But uh, still haven't fixed this yet. I did get everything dialed in with the clamp so so this will be a test. Uh, one of the rib nuts was stripped out. I ordered new rib nuts. They came in the wrong size, so luckily we've got a local place called Tacoma Screw. I went in and grabbed what I need. They had it in stock, so went and fixed the uh, two J hooks. Um, I uh, think I got for the most part. Got this fitment a little bit better here. I uh, went up to the shop, ratchet strapped. Oh, I forgot to move this back up. Um, I ratchet strapped this to uh, my forklift and just ratcheted it over and then tightened the clamps down. And the, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. Posted up in the group the other day, had a lot of people interested. So I think we're gonna go through with uh, getting these made. Um, yeah, uh, I'll show you guys. I actually, after fighting with uh, trying to get the magnets into the print, I've just decided to uh, print, put the magnets in separately. And then I'm uh, waiting for uh, Loctite makes uh, 480 it's like a it's like a rubber uh, glue basically it's black so I'm gonna put the magnets in and then put a drop on top of all the magnets let them cure for 24 hours um, and then they should be good to go I get that on Monday so I'm gonna test that out for a couple days after I put it on um, but uh, yeah everything seems to be seems to be kosher with everything I've had no no water coming in um, through the latches but I've uh, Noticed yesterday that, uh, I'll have to show you guys when I get to camp, but I had some water along the bottom of the window here. I've got water coming in on the fold down rear window. Um, so I got to get that figured out, but uh, that's a project for another day. I'm going to go enjoy myself for the weekend and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys uh, on the road. All right, guys, I was uh, about 10 minutes from home, got an email notification that an Etsy order came over. I don't know if you guys are like me, but I hate when I order stuff online and then it doesn't ship out till the following week and I'm gone for the next couple days. I'll be back until Sunday night. So I turned around, went home, packaged it up real quick, and I'm uh, going to swing by the post office on my way out of town, drop this off for uh, for another awesome customer that ordered another diesel heater port uh, attachment. Um, Dan, if you're watching this, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I try to get stuff out same day, next day, as much as possible, unless I'm already out of town when somebody shoots an order over. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll uh, catch up with you guys when I get uh, close. Uh, I'm going to meet up uh, with JT for lunch today. He has off on Fridays and I don't work, so um, we decided to head out early. It's a somewhat popular spot we're going to, so we wanted to get up there early and make sure that we got a, got the spot before anybody else did. Uh, there's a bunch of spots up there, but the one we want is is uh, prime with good, good views, even though it's supposed to be clear today and it's been raining all morning, so... We'll see, definitely be testing out the Lone Peak in the rain this weekend. And uh, I think I'm gonna uh, try to pull the diesel heater off of my swing out tonight and uh, run it uh, on the side of the truck, close to the diesel port on the passenger side, shorten up that hose length so I don't burn through so much fuel, but I uh, topped off the diesel tank and uh, I'm headed to the gas station now to fill up the truck. And while I'm there, I'm gonna fill up my uh, one gallon spare tank with diesel just to have it. Um, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys when we get down towards uh, the other side of the peninsula. All right, guys, just met up with uh, JT in his Turig. Uh, we were gonna grab lunch at the Oyster Saloon in Hamahama, but uh, we got there, stood in line for 20 minutes. We moved one person and we sold like 10 people in front of us. It's gonna take two hours before we got our food, so we decided to just head out, head to camp, and we'll uh, just eat something when we get to camp here. We're uh, headed up to Hamahama area for camping this evening. Uh, we came up early, like I said earlier, to grab the spot, then everybody else is coming in after work. Uh, 
I'll show the spot when we get up there or when we're heading up there. This is one of the spots I really don't care if it gets online because everybody and their mom in Washington knows this spot. Even people that aren't into overlanding know where we're going. So we'll, uh, yep, I'll uh, turn this back on when we get to the trail and we'll go from there. All right, guys, cruising down the road, heading up to the spot. Kind of taking it easy. I still haven't had the Lone Peak off-road much, so I don't know how it'll handle, uh, like, super bumpy roads. So I kind of just been been chilling a little, little bit here. We'll uh, get up here and we'll toss the drone up and uh, we'll get up to the spot. I'll see you guys when we get up there. guys just got up to our spot after spending 20 minutes trying to figure out how to use my drone features that I've never used the follow me you'd think they'd make it very easy it's easy once you know what the hell you're doing but my old DJI drone Phantom 4 I think it was the button for it now you just start recording and then click where you want it to, to, to active follow Seems pretty intuitive, unless you know don't know what the hell you're doing, and I had no service, so I couldn't look up how to do it, so I sat there 20 minutes fumbling with it, but we just got up to the spot, JT way up there. Yeah, we'll get a uh, camp set up, and uh, other guys will be here in a couple hours. Rain just stopped, it's kind of sprinkled for the last hour or two. JT and I had just chilled and kind of talked while the rain was coming down, but here's... Uh, Good view of where we're at. The other guys will be here in a couple of hours. As I was walking around, as I had mentioned, this is a pretty popular spot. And uh, people are up here all the time. As I was walking up the hill here, 
JT and I noticed uh, you guys are out camping. Pick up your shit, your literal shit. Take it home. There's, uh, I think, eight or nine poop bags here, a couple tampons, tampon wrappers, more toilet paper over there. You, got, you can't leave this stuff around, guys. It's just disgusting. Toilet paper all the way down the side of the hill here. Another tampon there. More trash there. We're going to get all this picked up. Everybody's at camp. Time to make some dinner. Going easy today. Just making some burgers. You're not a real overlander unless you got a scottle. So it's not actually a scottle, but... Oh, it's a helicopter. Chopper again? Oh, it's way over there. Oh. It's an airplane. It just sounded like somebody was driving down the road. Yeah, if you want the most uneven cooking surface, go ahead and buy an iCamp or Disco. <laughs> half the burgers are like burning, the other half are still raw. I mean, I'm sure part of that's because the wind is blowing this way, but... Everybody's in camp. Just got a fire going. Sun kind of went behind the hills. Temperatures dropped drastically. But we're just going to chill tonight. Hang out at the fire with the guys. At least once a, once a month, all the guys try to get together without kids and wives. Just chill. That's what this trip's all about. It turned out to be a beautiful day. Had rain a couple times, but hasn't been terrible. JT and I picked up the trash. Mostly JT I just watched, but ended up picking up, I think, 17 poop bags. I think they're all from the same people because they're all exactly the same bags. Just, you bring bags up here to shit in, but you don't take it home. Makes no sense to me. Nasty people. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, 7 o'clock. Woke up to this beautiful views. You see the mountain back here? I think everybody's up. I could hear them all moving around. I just uh, cooked some oatmeal. Don't want to be too loud, though. But can't beat the views up here. It's even better in the summertime when you can see the mountain through the clouds there. But I uh, decided to run the diesel heater in a closed-loop system last night, intaking the air from the tent. Kept me nice and toasty all night. I only used half a tank of fuel, so definitely a little more fuel efficient around that way. But just figured I'd show you guys the views before the clouds move in in a couple hours. Just beautiful. All right, I'll catch you guys in a bit. We got camp packed up. And we're uh, heading out of here. We're gonna go find some random trails. Go hit a waterfall, possibly. Gonna explore the area a little bit. We uh, we got all day, and we're planning on uh, hitting the spot up near Squim tonight. Weather has held out pretty good for us. It rained yesterday off and on for about an hour, but it was just kind of sprinkles, nothing nothing major. So today we're just gonna dink around for a little bit, and probably find camp a little after lunchtime possibly, and just chill for the weekend. I'll uh, throw up a drone video here shortly of us heading out and going through some of the trails.
So we're almost off of the side of the hill here. We've dropped uh, about 1,500 feet in elevation, probably about five minutes from the main road here. And then I think we're gonna go check out the waterfall. All the guys took off. I've been kind of taking it slow because I don't know what kind of beating this camper can take. So I kind of been uh, taking it easy, kind of just going five, 10 miles an hour. I'm sure they'll be waiting for me here any second. They'll call asking if I'm okay, but the guys took off just chilling on the way down and uh we'll uh i guess i'll catch up with you guys when we get up to our next spot whether that be the waterfall or a different trail but yeah see you there all right we're uh headed up to the waterfall to check it out beautiful area Pull the camera out when we get up to the falls. Here's the uh, waterfall. And a beautiful area. I'm in my, I'm in my van, so not the best shoes to be walking around over here in. But kind of wish I would have grabbed my camera when I walk out of the truck. Thought we were going to see a little tiny waterfall, not this uh, giant. Man, what a beautiful area. We uh, stopped in town, had some late breakfast, early lunch sort of deal. And uh, we're on the trail. I think this is about an hour, hour and a half. We're gonna be on this trail to our next spot. So far, pretty good, 45 degrees. Just a little bit of a sprinkle. I think it's supposed to clear up this afternoon. I think after it said like two or three o'clock, it's supposed to be like 2% chance of rain for the rest of the weekend. So it should hopefully be good. I'm just gonna cruise and relax and listen to some, some podcasts. I'm a podcast guy, so not much music, but podcasts and cruise. I'll uh, come back with you guys. If we run across anything cool, if not, I'll uh, start this video back up once we get to our next camp spot. We uh, made it to a trail. None of us have been up here. Gaia showed some clear cuts up at the top. So we're gonna come check it out and see if it's somewhere we can uh, stay for the night. If not, we're about 10 minutes from the spot that we had planned on going to. But figured we had, it's only 11.50, so definitely some time to explore. So we're just gonna look around and see if we can find these spots with good views. Sprinkling a little bit the last 20 minutes or so. I think it's supposed to, uh, rain off and on until two or three o'clock. I haven't checked the weather in the last couple hours, but hopefully we should have a clear evening, clear-ish, just cloudy. But we'll, uh, we'll see what we got coming up here and we'll go from there. Guy is showing this road ends in about a mile, so we're just kind of going up and up. Let's see what we got. Been through quite a few mud puddles. I'll show you guys when we get to camp, but the uh, handle covers are, looks like they're doing their job. They're all in place, so we'll see how clean everything is under the covers and show you guys a peek at that as well. But All right, I'll pick this back up when we get to the top and see, uh, see what we find. Sounds like we might have a downed tree up here. I won't run with the chainsaw this time of the year. Let's see what we can do. Looks like this spot basically ends up on the back side of the hill into a clear cut overlooking the entire valley. Is there an overlook? It looks like it, but it's hard to tell. I'm looking at fuzzy yeah. satellite images. This isn't going anywhere anyways once you get us off. Must have just recently fell. This looks like fairly fresh tracks here. You got a saw for you? I have a silky saw. Oh, it's just on that. I wonder if we can get it's it. It's literally right there. Yeah, but it's hung up there. I wonder if we can push it over and get it low enough to drive over it. Joseph's not getting over this. No. Silky saw to the rescue. Pulled it out. Took 
I'll have two minutes to cut. Cut in half, pull it off the road. Let's, uh, let's keep on trucking. I'm gonna get myself a nice hand saw. It's not a silky saw. Every time I feel, every time I use a silky saw, I feel like I'm gonna break the thing. But it's gotten us out of some pickles before. The tree was right here. Cut it right there. We just pulled the oh, other yeah. side over the side yeah. of the road. When Fidel Everything we could out. tell from my not very well downloaded maps at the spot up here hopefully it'll be pretty decent so we'll see when we get there i'll uh get you guys back out when we get up there it's just right up here around the corner all right hit another uh i wouldn't even call it a tree a downed bigger branch so jumped out silky saw saved us again cut it threw it off the side of the road and we're we're on the road again, almost to the spot. Tennessee, we're almost to the end here, so hopefully it's a, a decent spot. We'll see. All right, JT kept driving. He's gonna check out the spot, see if it's big enough for all of us. Trail's extremely muddy. It's one of the handles. Clean and dry. Check out the other side, I think it's got, definitely got a lot more mud on this side. Clean and dry. Well, that was a no-go. The bust Gaia's photos were old, which is unfortunate, but it's only two miles, so we'll backtrack to the, the main road here and then uh, hit another offshoot and see if we can find something with a view. Looking, uh, I don't know if you guys can see in the camera or not, but the clouds are, we're in the clouds right now. So even if we found a clear cut right this second, we wouldn't be able to see anything, but it's supposed to clear up in a couple hours. So hopefully we'll find something by then. I'll uh, catch you guys on the next uh, trail we hit. All right, we're on the, the next trail to the spot we know this up here. We're gonna take an offshoot kind of before we hit the camp spot that we had planned on going to to see if it has uh, any better views. Clouds are, I'd say low, but we're at 2,200 feet right now, and clouds are just over the top of the trees. So we'll see, see if they clear up, see if we can find a good spot. If not, we'll head back down and uh, camp near the water where it's clear. But uh, got about uh, two miles to the spot that we want to check out. So I'll uh, jump back on here as soon as we get a little bit closer. If we run into anything interesting on the way, guy uh, bamboozled us again. It's literally just a crappy grass patch surrounded by trees so definitely not a clear cut so the photos that Gaia has are extremely old which I've come to expect the last year or two of using it they've kind of gone downhill Onyx has got better satellite pictures we we're on some roads earlier that Gaia didn't even have listed like under any of their their layers no overland no US Forest Service roads nothing was listed Onyx and Google Maps both had the roads that we were on so Maybe it's time to switch over to Onyx. I've been a pretty strong Gaia supporter for the last couple of years because they've never really led me wrong. They always had issues with Onyx, but it seems like uh, Onyx has stepped up their game and Gaia has dropped the ball. But uh, we'll, uh, we're gonna backtrack about a mile to the road and then we're just gonna head up to our camp spot that we've been to, or that JT and Joseph have been to before. And we know there's a view there whenever the clouds burn off. Hang out there for a little bit and see if the weather clears up. If not, we're gonna head back down and get below the clouds. All right, we stopped at the known camp spot. It's a last resort camp spot. It's okay, no views as of now with the clouds and when there is no clouds. They said that there's a good a good view there, but I'm gonna, they can only see within like a 10 foot section of the trees. So we're gonna try up here and see if uh, what I could tell from the satellite image, it looked like there was a clear cut with a concrete pad or something up here. So I don't know if there might be a radio tower or something up here. So we'll uh, we'll see what it looks like when we get up here, and then we'll figure out if we want to even camp in this area or head south or head down. And it just started snowing. Cool. Headed down. We're uh, down to 900 feet from almost 2,800 or 2,900, 2,000 feet basically. Uh, it was a primitive campground down here. We're gonna check out, see if anybody's at. If not, we might uh, chill down here. There's a good spot here too, boy. Ooh. Yeah, I was actually out here last week and there was just, there was some people camping here. 
Uh, I went up to the other spot, nice spot for maybe two or three people in the summertime, but we couldn't see anything and definitely not enough room for four rigs. So we're going to backtrack all the way down to the main road because it's now snowing 35 degrees and rain, snow mix and 35 degrees is miserable 100% of the time. So we're going to uh, backtrack down a little bit. We've got another spot we want to check out at 900 feet elevation, which is almost 2,000 feet lower than we just were. So we're going to head down there. It's about eight miles away. Um, guy is being a piece of crap right now, so it keeps telling me it's going to be a two-hour drive to go seven miles. So we're just going to follow the route over there, and we should be there in about 45 minutes. And uh, we'll see if it's worthwhile, and if not, we'll just keep looking for spots. Not sure what's going on. I, I did not use my brakes the whole way down that hill, so... Yeah, I can smell them. Maybe I was riding them more than I thought I was. All right, we made it to camp. It's right next to the road, but it's uh, kind of a road that's not used very much. So we're right on the river. Literally. It's got the fire going. Get everything warmed up. It's pretty muddy out. It's been raining the last couple of days here. I know I already showed you guys this, but I, uh, and you can see how muddy the truck is. There's a solid quarter, half inch of mud in some places. Dry. So, definitely happy with that. Yeah, I'm just gonna chill. It's only 3.30. Got here uh, about 1.45, so I've been here a couple hours already. About another hour or so, uh, start cooking. I got a steak for tonight, so I'll cook some steak and some mashed potatoes, and we're just gonna chill. JT's gotta head out super early tomorrow. He's got, got a ferry ride that he had to do a reservation for, and all they had was, I think he said eight or nine o'clock tomorrow, and it's like an hour and a half, two hour drive from here, so he's gotta head out of camp around six tomorrow, so. But, yeah, it's been an enjoyable weekend. A little chilly, but not too bad. b and in April, you know, so expected rain all weekend, so I can't complain. Don't really need the diesel heater tonight, but I'm going to set it up anyways just to take the edge off and try to dry the inside of the tent tonight. I don't, don't feel like packing it up all wet, so... All right, guys, it's, uh... 7.30, it's uh, been raining basically since we got here, um, hung outside with the fire for a little while, had some dinner, uh, we decided to turn in a little early tonight, just watch movies or something, it's kind of miserable being outside, so having the camera up that far, uh, my wife tells me I'm not going bald, but I'm definitely going bald, so maybe it's, uh, maybe it's time to shave my head. But I figured I'd show you guys how I set up camp, or set up camp, uh, set up basically when I'm all set up here. Uh, I store everything under my bed usually uh, during the day or when I'm at camp. And then uh, when it's time to go to bed, I put everything down on this bench because I don't really need access to the bench. Um, <clears throat> basically, just my double sleeping bag. I just need one pillow because it's just me. Um, and then I, uh, I climb up. I think I showed you guys in one of my first videos here jump up on the on the fridge and uh, basically mount my my ram mount for my tablet right here so I leave the ball permanently on the on the ceiling there but makes for a nice uh, nice viewing area here and then I just uh, I usually hang out with my head over on the far side, so aim it that way. And I uh, have a, a perfect uh, viewing here. And then I can, I have my little uh, side table, basically the side of my, my uh, countertop here. I leave all my stuff on. I keep a, uh, 
uh, carbon monoxide detector, carbon monoxide, my uh, diesel heater thermostat and controllers right here. Last night I ran with it in circulation mode, sucking air in from the tent, putting bare air back in the tent. Tonight I didn't feel like getting out in the rain and doing that, so I'm just running the diesel heater, um, running the diesel heater, sucking air from outside. It's not that cold outside. It's like 40, 38, 40 outside right now, so it's not not terribly cold. So, yeah, I'm uh, gonna see what I have on my tablet and watch something. I think I have a couple movies left. I'll watch basketball again, like I did last weekend, or I'll uh, I'll watch. Uh, I think I have Strays. I saw that in theaters. It's pretty funny. And I, I don't know if I told you guys this or not, but I have a uh, Claymore, I think it's Claymore brand, uh, fan here. I just, uh, whether you guys can see that or not, but it's right here. Uh, I have it hooked to just a clamp that clamps on my, my hoop there, um, and I point it up so it blows the hot air around inside the tent. Uh, I did that with my last tent too. It just always had it on, even in the middle of winter time, middle of summer time. Just keeps the air circulating in here. Stagnant air is the worst. So, uh, yeah, I've been super stoked with the camper so far. This is our first overlanding, in quotations, um, overlanding trip with it. Yeah, I'm really bald up there, huh? One of these days I'll go over with all you guys what my medical issues are. I ran into some pretty serious medical issues last year and I've been on some pretty heavy medication and it makes me lose my hair and it's been getting a lot worse. So, but anyways, um, I did find some leaking. I have leaking in the front of the cab along the, the front uh, bed, front of the bed, not the front of the bed up here, but the front of the bulkhead of the bed. So I got to figure out where that's coming from. It's not terrible, but it's definitely coming in. I can see the water, and water's like anything. I mean, if it's got a little tiny hole to go through, it's going to get in. So we'll get that figured out. But, yeah, been uh, been super stoked. Stoked with all this so far. Everything seems, uh, seems dry in here. Just some moisture up top, but that's just from, from me having the tent open the last couple hours. Uh, nothing, nothing. And then I don't know if I showed you guys, I might insert a clip right here. Um, when I got to camp yesterday, I heard like a, almost like air was coming out of a tire and I could not figure out where it was coming from. And uh, I walked to the front of the tent and there's uh, one of the Allen, one of the Allen bolts. So I was putting my finger over it and the noise would stop, and there was air coming out. And the only thing I could think of is there might be some water in the side rails here, and it was pushing the air down when I lifted the tent up. Uh, so I went through, and every single Allen bolt on the outside of the tent was a quarter turn or a half turn loose. Like, it's almost like they hand tightened it when they sealed it, and they didn't go through and torque them all down, and they were all loose, every single one of them. So uh, I went through, and every, like I said, quarter turn, half turn on every single Allen bolt on the outside of the camper. So, and then uh, today we hit some pretty rough roads. Uh, the camper, the side, the gap along the, the passenger side door, the gap along the passenger side of the rear door has closed back in again. It's not touching yet, but it's a lot closer than it was yesterday or the day before. So I need to figure that out. Uh, I'm gonna reach out and uh, see what they tell me. Hopefully we can get something sorted because I don't want that to be an issue down the road. But yeah, uh, and then I already showed you guys um, the handle flaps. I mean, there's a bunch of mud on there. Made it easy. I mean, I couldn't imagine trying to get that open with, with as much mud as I have on the side of my truck. Uh, that's uh, definitely, definitely something I'm glad I came up with those flaps. So hopefully uh, I can start producing those for you guys and get those up on Etsy. I'll let you guys know. It takes forever to make them. So I can only get two sets a day done uh, two sets a day done. So, uh, hopefully I can get another printer maybe and, uh, get four or five sets done a day. Uh, it would make it a lot easier. I think it's something that 99.5% of people will benefit from. So hopefully I can get enough made to get everybody that wants to get some done. So, but yeah, I'm, uh, just going to hunker down, watch a movie, head to bed, 
JT's got to catch a ferry early in the morning. He said he's got to be out of here at 7.38 tomorrow, so I'll probably be, I'll probably head out at the same time they do. I got about two and a half hour drive home from here, so it's not terrible, but get on the road early enough to where I don't have to deal with traffic. Uh, rain, it's coming down pretty good. I'm sure you can hear it. It's, it's not deafening in here. My last tent, uh, if it rained hard enough, it was like really loud, but I still think I'm going to go through uh, this is, uh, I would assume, about an inch. I might get some inch foam insulation and glue it on the underside of here uh, just to do a thermal barrier and to help with sound a little bit. Uh, but it's not its not terrible. But, all right, I'll, uh, I might do something before I go to bed, but if not, I'll uh, catch you guys in the morning. Good morning. It's 6 o'clock. Passed out watching a movie last night. Wake up a little bit here and just crank the heat up a minute or a second ago. Make some breakfast, wait for the guys to wake up, get everything packed up. Probably get out of here in the next hour and a half or so. I'll, uh, catch you guys when we're back up and we'll go over a few things and the road right to an half hour ride home i'll see you guys in a bit all right it's uh 7 20 and jt just dipped he's got a little over an hour to the ferry he's got to catch up by nine so let's get there a little early jim just woke up i've been up since i don't know 5 30 or whatever time i said i woke up had some breakfast got my awning put away joseph's trying to dip out so he's packing Jim's awning away. But we got uh, we got blue skies and lots of mud. But I slept good minus that that mattress in the Lone Peak. Definitely gonna be switching that out. It's good if you're uh, 120 pounds, but at 260 and 64, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world for me after a couple hours of laying on it. But overall, I mean, it rained until just after midnight, I think. Basically rained on us until I woke up, but I think it was just the water coming out of the moss. But no leaks inside the tent. I think I'm gonna spray some waterproofing on it this week after it dries out. Didn't look like the water was beating off of it like I usually have on my tents, but I usually waterproof my tents once a year. So I'll get it set up in the shop and I'll do a video on that too. I always use the same stuff. It's a uh, marine, marine fabric uh, waterproofing. I've used it for six years, five, six years, and I've always had good luck with it. I usually do my awning once a year. Water just beads right off, so I'll probably stick with that. Diesel heater kept me warm all night. Just shut it off. It's drying out, or it's uh, cooling down. Got my awning packed up. Got most of my... Uh, most of my camping stuff packed up and washed off. Everything was covered in mud, so I just went and rinsed it off in the river and then dried it off. I'm in no rush today. Jim's in no rush today, so we're probably just gonna hang out for a little while. I'll probably wait until he's, uh, until he's ready to go and then I'll pack up and we'll hit the, hit the road. I'll uh, catch up with you guys when we're heading out. All right, guys, Jim and I are uh, headed out of here. It's, uh, my truck GPS is the only one signal right now, so it's saying I'm about two and a half hours from home, two hours and 23 minutes. Uh, we'll see once I uh, get to the top of the hill. I think I get a bar of service and I'll actually get into Google Maps and see what the fastest way home is, but Jim needs to stop for fuel. He had like 40 miles to empty. Me with the diesel, I still over have, still have over half a tank. But I might stop and top off, and then on the way home, I'm going to stop by the self-serve car wash and get this thing pressure washed off so I don't end up with all this garbage in my driveway. But, yeah, I'll uh, catch you guys on the road. And then uh, when we get home, I'll kind of go over a few things that I uh, did not didn't enjoy this weekend and all that good stuff. So I'll see you guys here in a little bit. All right, guys. I uh, ditched everybody. I'm heading home. Jim had to stop for fuel. I just kept driving. I decided not to stop with him. So we're uh, about
about an hour and a half from home, 80 miles, heading across Hood Canal Bridge. Right now I'm averaging 19 miles to the gallon. Dropped a little bit yesterday. We are going up and down a bunch of steep hills and we climbed from sea level the 3,000 feet like three times up on the trails so definitely took a dip but still better than than it would have been with any other setup truck is disgusting so i'm gonna swing by car wash when i get into town get that sprayed off and then uh we'll go from there all right guys we're back home i was gonna do a video when i got home but it started absolutely dumping rain so a couple hours later um, trip was good everything seemed to be seemed to be good I uh, went stopped by the self-service car wash and just sprayed the truck off wasn't too worried about uh, getting it super clean so I absolutely destroyed my tailgate there uh, a few things I noticed I uh, must have backed into something turning around yesterday when I couldn't see out of the back of my truck and caved the door in here and caved the bottom of the, the case in, which is not great. Um, one thing I've noticed and has been brought up on the Lone Peak page is uh, everything on this thing scratches super easy, so just be aware of that. Uh, I got some pinstriping and I'm not going to come off. so. Um, and then uh, where I'd wiped off the mud around the, the diesel heater port, it's all scratched up now. Is what it is. The truck is uh, extremely scratched up, so it's not a huge deal, but just to be forewarned on that. Um, other than that, everything seems to have uh, seems to have gone okay with the camper. The uh, gaps here are right back to being non-existent again, so... Gonna work on that this week at some point. Definitely got a little mud, uh, not from that, that's from when I was pressure washing. I was hitting everything with a pressure washer pretty hard. But for uh, the most part, everything's, uh, everything was, uh, it was a great trip, aside from uh, not sleeping the greatest because the mattress is uh, not a friend of mine. So I'll be looking into replacements here pretty shortly. But it's uh, supposed to rain here the next three days, so I opened the camper up right when I got home for about 10-15 minutes while the sun was out to dry off any of the moisture that was still in the tent from this morning. Everything seemed pretty dry when I, uh, when I packed it back away, so it should be good. I'm going to go up to the shop for a little bit, maybe tomorrow, and I'll open it up in the shop and let it dry out some more. My awning is completely drenched, so we'll have to get that dried out here in the next couple of days, but... All right, well, I'll uh, see you guys on the next adventure.